Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this will be the second part of my PCB reliability demonstration. Okay, so we start with a space claim geometry, and we're going to be doing a warfish analysis, which is a static structural simulation. Start by going to engineering data and selecting some materials we'll be working with. Standard materials include FR4 and copper for the PCB. I have a material library for different types of PGA materials. And I'll copy maybe my chip in there and uh, maybe some sort of metal, like an aluminum alloy. So then we start the Actually, before we do that, we can do the trace mapping. The so trace mapping involves selecting a external data block and linking that external data block to my model cell. In external data, we will load in our TGZ file, uh, the Novena TGZ file. And it'll, we can choose to do some rigid body transformation but because I've lined, up, lined it up in space claim, then the data should overlap and I shouldn't have any issues with. Trace mapping allows us to accurately capture the behavior of the PCB by mapping the location of copper traces onto our mesh. Okay, this is done, so we can go begin our simulation. Okay, the model has been imported into my workbench mechanical environment. I can begin by setting material properties. So the first thing to do is I want to assign my board to the FR4. Hide it. I'll map the traces on later. Um, then we can select, a, oh I probably should have included a plastic model to represent the plastic components. So let's go add a polyethylene into the simulation. Fresh materials. So let's go ahead and select parts that are mostly plastic. Oh, one, one step I missed is that there are oftentimes intersections in this model. So ANSYS can handle intersections through um, handle intersections through contacts, but it's uh, sometimes better to fix any intersection problems. So in space claim, we can readily go to pair and find interference regions. Not too many intersection regions. A few here, a few there. Uh, so we want to subtract it from the small body, which means typically we keep the PCB uh, intact and we cut it out of the smaller components. Okay, no more intersecting bodies. And I want to ensure that our PCB didn't get damaged, so let's find all others. Look, so it doesn't look like there's anything cut out of the PCB, which is important, which means that all the intersections were done on the components on top of it. Let's go back to ANSYS now. Because the geometry is linked, Space claim and SS. It should maintain all the material properties as, well as anything else I've done and when it's updating the geometry. Okay, so let's check to make sure that uh, this is still FR4. 
Let's see what these two parts are. That looks okay. Let's set, assign the rest of the materials. So right here, we'll make these components uh, mostly plastic. Them. Um, these two are probably plastic. And these components are going to be uh, make them out of aluminum. And everything else, um, this one is probably metal. So everything else for now, set it to be. That's all of my bodies. The next step that we want to do is control the meshing. Let's see if we can mesh this model. So oftentimes these models, because there's so much detail, there are issues. For example, if we um, let's go ahead and try to do a, a standard mesh on this geometry by default and see how far we get. So here ANSYS is using uh, multi multiple processors to do the meshing. So it looks like it's having some trouble with my board. Now the board's not meshed, but there may be other uh, issues as well. So let's take a look at it to see what this problem is. So this, it'll ha Ansys will highlight areas that it couldn't mesh in yellow. Let's take a look. So the issue with this area is that there are faces here that are very close to touching, but being separate from each other. This surface here, you go back to problematic geometry, it says they're having trouble with this face at this corner because things touch, but they don't really touch. So we'll have to fix that in geometry. Now it's common to have issues like this in CAD models where two surfaces are very close together. So to, to fix this, we can edit the model in Space Clean. So the model is this piece here. And the issue is we have some surfaces here that are very close together, but not quite touching. And Ansys tries to resolve these issues by defeaturing near the um, in small gaps. But when it's very close together like this, Ansys can have problems with uh, setting up the meshing properly. We should probably do both sides here. So I'll do this. Uh, space claim allows us to just drag surfaces around. To fix the 
model. Providing a little bit of space allows uh, the measure to resolve these geometries more accurately. And they don't significantly change. So we fixed that issue, let's go back to the measure. Uh, we'll update the geometry and load it in and try to mesh it again. Okay. If we zoom in, you can see we've added these extra little gaps. You can select the one part and generate mesh on it. Okay, there's still some issues. That we missed a few areas. Of, uh... Right, so th these surfaces also need to be fixed. Go back to highlighting the meshing section and let's try to generate a mesh on this again. Okay, so now that we've cleaned up all the issues, and this is able to generate the mesh easily. The area here, the PCB boards are very thin, so ANSYS has a specialized meshing method for this. We're going to insert a method and specify this as a sweep method. Under the source and target selection options, we have the option of selecting, defining this as a thin body. Now, this defines the sweeping direction and makes it much easier for ANSYS to then generate the mesh. And I'm going to generate mesh on one part. Once this is successful, I can generate on the remaining geometry. And because we have the P entire PCB stack defined as a single part, as we ensure conformal meshing. So this is the mesh that it has generated. Uh, we can always refine the mesh later as needed. So let's go ahead and generate the mesh on the entire assembly. Okay, we've completed the mesh. Um, you can see there's a note saying that we're using selective body meshing. This means we have asked ANSYS to mesh certain parts before others. Uh, you can record that if you wish. In this case, I just need a mesh, so I'm not going to do that. The node count is fairly high. It's over a million node. I'd like to reduce this mesh down for our preliminary analysis. Uh, one of the things that's taking up a lot of element count are the small bodies that's meshed using many, many elements. So, um, so what I can do, we can, for example, the first thing we do for these models is identify areas of interest. For example, these are our three important chips. So we're going to specify that we're using the sweep meshing method and we want at least three elements through the thickness to capture any bending of, this, of the chips. a gap between the chip and the board. So we can fix that in the CAD model or we can fix it in uh, set a specify a contact element here. We also want to specify some sizing on the board, on the chips. So we want to, because the chips are important here, we're going to have a two millimeter mesh on those chips. So aside from these chips, I'm going to select everything else. Uh, let's hide these. Hide the PCB. Hide body. Okay. 
So we have a lot of other parts. I'm going to assign a tetrahedral elements on all of these parts. Tetrahedral elements are an easy and robust way to mesh complex bodies. They will hopefully allow us to reduce the mesh count in this model. Here the mesh has been generated for the entire assembly, so we can proceed on to the next part of the simulation.